everyone and welcome. It's good to be here. It's nice to be back. I, I enjoyed my little time away, but it's also good to be home. I'll bore you to hear at some point if you ask me about all my wandering around uh, Washington, but uh, that's not what we came here to hear about. So, very glad to have you here and, and recognizing that families come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and as do mothers, I guess. But, uh, happy Mother's Day and I I always feel funny when we get what I call a hallmark holidays. We're not really in the church rhythm of things, but we're really good to, glad to have people here. And uh, I also recognize that, you know, many of us have been very fortunate and had wonderful or still have wonderful caring mothers. There are people here, or people among us, and people we know who haven't had that. And so we honor them as well. So thank you for gathering today. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. Our opening hymn, Jesus shall reign. The word of the Lord. <laughs> that 
great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant. Make us perfect in every good work to do your will, and work in us that which is well pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 9, beginning at verse 36. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. For the psalm today, Psalm 23, we will be singing it. The words are in the bulletin.
reading is from the Revelation of St. John, chapter 7. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honour, and power, and might be to our God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God. We get to sing again our gradual hymn, Lord of Life, who wants to us cradle, and then we remain standing for the gospel that follows.
Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking to the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Give them eternal Give, I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will ever snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated in the letter of some of the smaller and medium-sized people would come to the front. A little bit on the ground, but we've got some. is the 
shepherd uh, that cares for people. And I think when you, you know, the stuff that describes shepherds doing in the Bible are often the kind of things that we picture mothers of whatever kind of So that's why we're looking at that today. So that's what we're giving thanks for today. And we have a way, you guys can help them maybe, maybe the other two can help out as well. So we have some over there, here's a bucket with a bunch of flowers in it. So yeah.
thanks to Nate Spelling for the flowers and to the, the volunteers, volunteers. Uh, that's pretty good. Thank you very much for that. And uh, that back over, you can bring them downstairs to Sunday school. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Well, again, thank you for that. And I should follow by apologizing in, in some form in that the sermon this week is not really a warm, fuzzy one about how wonderful mothers are. Some of us have had wonderful mothers, and I like to think of myself in that category, but, but not all of us. I don't think I can pull a Mother's Day focus out of the readings this week without a crowbar, so I'll see how I did at the end, but I will apologize to those who expected a Hallmark card sermon. It's not what, what came out this week. And you'll see that in my first sentence. Death. See? <laughs> it's a powerful force in our time. To be honest, that's not new. Only the amount of time we seem to spend thinking about the death of ourselves and others. Many of the things that we that make up the news that we see in whatever form we watch it or read it involve the death of far too many through violence or disease, especially in the last year or two. In many ways, it's odd because we push back through science, through lifestyle, through diet, through so many things, we push back the inevitable to an extent that would be envied by people at almost any other time in human history. But at the same time, I don't know that we have the tools that people used to have to understand how to make sense of it. It's probably a mix of not being around for as much of it, because of course, people used to die old. And people used to work on farms where the animals would die on a regular basis. And, and that's not how it happens anymore. People, pets just kind of, oh, they went to the farm. Or, or it happens at the hospital with a few people and lots of people around and lots of machinery and lots of beeping and then the beeping stops and it's hard really to know how it happens. And the beliefs about what happens afterward have been lost or at least a little bit scrambled up for a lot of people. So we don't have the same toolkit, if you will, to make sense of it when, when someone dies. In recent decades, We've been working and succeeding in many ways at controlling the nature and, and have hidden the reality of death, perhaps in hope that we might gain a little more power of it. Most of us have heard of people freezing the bodies of their loved ones after they die and making arrangements for them to be thawed out later and revived. I also understand that actually hasn't happened that often. And Walt Disney apparently never did it, despite what I, the rumor was. I also understand it doesn't have a hope of working the way we do it at the moment. You ever pull out a steak out of the freezer that's been there too long? <laughs> also, a lot of what happens around funerals is designed to mask the reality of death. Just watch the words people use. Someone described as passing. I get why people say that. It seems a much gentler but the reality is, in, in a very real way, they didn't pass, they failed. They died. Death is a hard word to say out loud, especially when it's said about someone you love. I suppose the reason we, we don't want to talk about death, we don't want to think about it, is it's something that we can't work around, ultimately. And we don't like that. But the reality is that these bodies wear out, and that all of us will die, whether by old age, or disease, or violence, or something else. We, we try to avoid it, which is a good thing, <coughs> most of the time. But it waits for us. And it will be there, for all of us. How do we deal with that? What do we do with that? Well, we deal with it, or one of the ways that I find is best at dealing with it is to realize that there's something else more powerful. And that's love. Both divine and human. Doesn't make it go away, doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But death has no power over love. And we see that 
in the person of Jesus Christ. We see that on the cross. We see that in the resurrection. We see that in God's promises to us and in what we experience when someone we love has died. The book of Revelation, we had a reading from it a little earlier. It's a heck of a book. Usually, it's a good way to end up way out of left field, if it's to start reading that and trying to figure out what it means, because it's not a simple book to understand. But, but I want to back up a little bit into chapter 6. The reading that was done was in chapter 7. In chapter 6, John writes to people who are experiencing war and persecution, violence and sudden death. That's who he's addressing it to. And that's important to know. He's addressing it to people who are, who are in real danger and real fear of death. And it presents the Book of Seven Seals, which contain in some ways the history of human experience. And the only one who's worthy to open it is Christ, as represented by the Lamb of God. And he opens the first four seals, and out comes what we know as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Again, all strange images, and I'm, I'm not going to unpack all of them today. That's for some future Bible study, perhaps. But so who are they? Well, they're both the personal and the corporate disasters that people experience. The first rider on a white horse, riding with a bow in his hand and a crown on his head, that's military conquest. Well, sadly, we know that one at the moment. The people in Ukraine certainly know that one. The second rider on a red horse has a sword in his hand, the kind used in close combat, close confrontation. The third rider is on a black horse that holds a balance. He represents famine. Again, there's very few times in human histories where these haven't been abroad in the world. The fourth rider rides a pale horse, and he is, his name is Death. And he's really the ultimate doom from which, apparently at least, there is no escape. And the fifth seal is open, and we see people who have experienced oppression crying out, How long? And when the sixth seal is open, we see the worldly powers responsible for that depression. And they're experiencing some anxiety because the power is starting to slip out of their hands. Natural calamities take place reminding us that human beings have limitations. And these worldly figures are unable to deal with their limitations and face their own death. Well, it's a fairly nasty chapter, to be honest with you. But again, it's not unfamiliar, whether in our own lives or in the things we read online or in the newspapers or on TV. Chapter 7, though, there's a real shift. The first is a scene of worship with the people of God, represented by the 12 tribes of Israel. When you dwell in the Bible, is it means everyone's here who needs to be. So the 12 tribes means God's people are all together. It's complete. And all those calamities, all those forces of evil, all those bad things in chapter 6 have done their worst and they haven't overcome it. God's people are still all together in one place. And the second picture is the scene that's in today's reading. And it's a very powerful image of the victory of love. Before us is a multitude of people which no one can number who have come through tribulation. They're dressed in white robes. They're joining with a heavenly chorus in a liturgy of praise to God. And it includes, I think, some of the most beautiful words in the Bible. It says this, For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship God day and night within the temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor the scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. It's often used at funerals for obvious reasons. Look at what that's saying. First of all, it's saying, it's recognizing that, that suffering is part of human life. 
that, that they will cry, they will suffer, but they will triumph. And the tears will be wiped away. The image of the shepherd in the Bible is an image of caring, an image of, of sacrificial caring, because shepherds didn't just, you know, they didn't phone it in, well, in that phone, but even if they did. Shepherds had to be out there with the flocks. They had to be willing to put themselves at some personal risk in order to defend the sheep, defend the lambs. The 23rd Psalm begins with those words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It's a very reassuring image for people because it ensures us of God's care in difficult times. I've said, I say this often at funerals, you know, it's a very reassuring psalm, but look where we are in that psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That doesn't sound like a good place to be. But God is with us. The shepherd is with us in the midst of that. Maybe that's the Mother's Day tie-in for you. The one thing that's more determined than a shepherd is a loving mother protecting her child. The image of the good shepherd who calls the sheep by name, who doesn't allow any to be plucked out of his hands. That's the image that can help us look death in the face and know that it doesn't win. These bodies won't last. No matter how well we eat, the amount of exercise we get, how much spinach we eat, how carefully we listen to our mothers and what they tell us to do, to tell us not to, we're all going to end our lives at some point. But the love of God, the love of the Good Shepherd, the care of the Good Shepherd will always be there. And even the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's not a light sermon or a happy one, but I think it's, I find it reassuring. And for that reassurance of the shepherd, the reassurance of the love of God, I give God thanks. In our books on page 189, you'll find the words of the Apostles' Creed. We stand and say it together. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we move to our time of prayer, you may sit, stand, or kneel as you find most helpful. Let us pray for Christ's Holy Church. In the worldwide cycle of prayer, we pray for Elise and Yuken to Rwanda. In Newfoundland and Labrador, we pray for the parish of Grand Bank, rector, the Reverend Charlie Cox, and congregation of St. Alban at Grand Bank. We pray for the parish of Grand Bay, for the priest in charge, the Reverend Faye Coffin, and congregations at St. Paul, Grand Bay, the Holy Trinity, Codroy, St. John the Evangelist, Cape Ray. In joy and hope, let us pray to a source of all life, saying, 
Hear us, Lord of glory. Hear us, Lord of glory. That our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We think of believers who are not able to gather in safe, comfortable church buildings, but are doing whatever they can to minister and worship as Christ's body. We ask that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of the Lord. Lord, you know how hard it is for us humans to try not to hold power over each other in ways that are open, in ways that are subtle. Help us see when we do this that Christ may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of Lord. We recall that people who our God holds dear, the prisoners, the marginalized, the poor, that he may provide for those who lack food, are underemployed or lack work or shelter, and we pray for those who provide assistance. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We ask for peace for the troubled relationships between people and nations, thinking particularly of Ukraine, that by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We bring to the Lord those among us who are suffering, those who are sick, asking that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, to the weak, to the dying. We pray especially today for Ava, Courtney, Crystal, Pamela, Dale, Lee, Florence, Randy, Alex, Lynn, Allison, Tony, Lydia, Sharon, Bill, Corrine, and anyone known to us as well, that they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Asking our God to be with us as we go from this time of refreshment and worship to do his work in the world, and remember that we are an Easter people, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, Lord. We give great thanks for those people who have nurtured us as we go, mothers and all others. Help us to forgive their failings and seek to grow into the best possible sources of love and mentoring and nurturing for all those who can learn from us. Father of light, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue on page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry that we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Instead, we should know that without breaking COVID rules, we exchange the peace with one another. Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, but and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, the death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Will you sentences number 8 on page 213? Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised in life. We were buried in your tomb. And now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And most of you will know the, the, the routine. You come up the center and it's a little social distancing green tape on the ground. Stand on the X to receive the bread and then go over to the table to receive the wine in the little glass. Take your little glass into the next room and there's a bin that they go in. And then I should just say, sometimes I'll slow people down at the bread. So if you come up to the bread and I'm not giving it right away, 
don't worry, I know you're there. Just in case you've got a bit of a traffic jam on the other end.
And just a reminder of the, the prayer chain ministry. Um, if you know of anyone that you think is in need of prayer, there's lots of contact information there for Elsie. Or if you just want to find out a little bit more what they do, there's some phone numbers and some email. And I think that's a really important part of the ministry that we do. Anything else? I think that's it. All right. And again, it's good to be back. And I thank all the folks, especially Sheila, who looked after things in my absence. Last Sunday, I didn't even worry about it because I knew it was in good hands. Which is kind of nice. So don't tell me otherwise if it wasn't. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's fine. So thank you. And I think uh, that's it. We'll move to the blessing and do our final hymn. We stand for the blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn, Our God Reigns.